guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you a video on how much air to pump into your soccer ball slash football, whatever you call it in your part of the world. This is something that I get asked about pretty regularly, so I figured I'd make a video kind of sharing what I know in regards to putting air in a ball. This is something that obviously doesn't really get taught or I guess isn't mentioned when you purchase a brand new soccer ball or even a pump for that matter. So like I said, I'm gonna do somewhat of a tutorial video in terms of sharing my knowledge on the matter and giving you some ideas of what you should look out for and I guess more importantly, what you should feel for when putting air into a soccer ball. So if you wanna learn more, stick around. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So starting with the very basics, this is what you're gonna need, a ball, pretty obvious. And then of course, a pump. This is a hand pump by Nike. Pretty straightforward. If you're interested in one of these, this is what I personally use. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description where you can buy one for yourself. They're fairly inexpensive and they do get the job done. Pretty durable as well. Nice and small. You can carry it around with you, which I very strongly recommend, but we'll get back to that in just a second. So with the soccer ball itself, it needs air. How much air do you put in the ball? Well, if you want to go regulation in terms of what's recommended for that specific ball, because it will vary from one ball to another, if you look on the ball itself, generally listed around the valve, you'll find some fine print or very small writing. Sometimes they just put it scattered throughout the ball, but there will be a pressure variance range listed. For this particular ball, it is 0.8 to 1.0 bar or 11.6 to 14 and a half PSI. Now, I will say this, if you use regulation air pressure in something like this, this is a Champions League match ball, any kind of match ball or any soccer ball for that matter, when you get into the regulation air pressure zone, 90% of the time, the ball will pretty much be rock solid. And for most people, it's just gonna feel way too hard. So you can go with the recommended pressure variance. The way to measure that is gonna have to be with a pressure gauge, obviously, which some pumps have that built in. This one obviously does not or you can buy a separate gauge altogether that you just plug into the valve and it'll tell you the air pressure inside of the ball. But again, that's something that I personally don't recommend doing. I don't do it myself, so not entirely necessary. So if you're not gonna go by the recommended pressure variance listed on the ball and measure out the air pressure, how much air do you put? Well, you kind of have to feel it out and that's what I'm gonna try to teach you or at least what I look out for when putting air in a soccer ball. So I'm gonna get a little closer here so you can get a better look at this ball. Again, this is a Champions League match ball, so it is gonna have a firmer sensation in general. That's generally what you will find with match balls. So this ball, it is at the moment flat. It's in need of air and it's kind of difficult to show that on camera, but you can see that I can definitely push it in way too far. This is soft. This is really lacking air a lot. You can see I can push it in pretty significantly in two different spots, which you shouldn't necessarily be able to do. This needs quite a bit of air. So what you do is you grab your pump. Again, I personally like to use a hand pump. You can buy a bigger one, which will put air in the ball more quickly. That's good if you're pumping up more than one soccer ball. If you have a full bag, like 10, 12 soccer balls, that's gonna go a lot quicker than something like this. But I think a hand pump is always good to have in your bag at all times because you can always fine tune the air pressure in your ball while you're playing or before you play, probably the best way to do it. So you wanna obviously find the valve on the ball, then you wanna grab your uh, pump. Some people, it does say rec it's recommended that you moisten the needle prior to putting it in the ball, which generally you would just lick the needle like that, get it a little bit wet, plug it in. And basically the reason why they recommend that is just so it doesn't stick to the rubber. Sometimes the rubber can be a little bit clingy to the needle itself and you don't want to damage the valve. So that's the reason for that. You don't necessarily have to do it, but it's generally not a bad idea. I like to put the ball right about here and then pump it. So basically you're pumping the ball for a period of time that is kind of undetermined here. You're basically just going for feel. So this ball does need a fair bit of air. So I put a decent amount in there. I'm gonna feel it. It definitely does need a lot more. And you know what? I actually think that the needle is too loose in this pump. So I'm not actually getting much air there. So make sure that your needle is intact. There you go. Pretty common mistake that I guess some people could have if 
uh, you find that your pump's not working properly. So I'm gonna put some air in this really quickly. Again, this is a small pump, so it'll take probably 20, 30, 40 pumps until you have a sufficient amount of air in the ball, depending on how much air the ball actually needs. Like I said, this one was pretty well deflated. But again, I put a couple pumps in there and the ball is feeling a lot more solid. Hopefully you guys can get a better idea of that. But I would say still that I would like a little bit more air in the ball. So I'm gonna go again and continue to put some more air. So this is really the best way to do it if you're not measuring out the air pressure, which like I said, I don't necessarily think that you need to do. Some referees will do this before a game. It's very uncommon based on the referees that I've seen personally. Um, I guess technically they're supposed to do it, but again, most don't. So again, I pumped it a little bit more and now it feels just about right. It's got some firmness to it. You should be able to kind of compress the ball ever so slightly with your finger but it should have a firmer sensation in general, especially a match ball like this. If it feels good in your hands, try it out, kick the ball a couple of times, and that's really where you have to kind of make your own judgment there. If it feels right, then use it. If it feels like it leads, leads a little bit more air, put a little bit more air in it. The ball should have a pingy sensation no matter what though. It should never feel like your foot is kind of sinking into the ball uh, if it is it generally means that the ball does not have enough air. Now let's say that you pumped too much air into the ball. What do you do now? Well, you can actually remove air using the needle on the pump itself. So if we take the needle here and unscrew it, which I think I can do like this, you can remove the needle so it's completely separate from the pump itself. You no longer need the pump. Put that down, you grab the actual ball, you go right to the valve and then as soon as you plug it in, because it's just a needle with an open hole, it's gonna immediately let out air. And hopefully I'll put this by the mic so you can hear it. Immediately air starts coming out. So if you do put a little bit too much, you put the needle in there for a second, check it again, and you're likely gonna be okay. Do that as many times as you need until you have the proper amount of air. One last thing that I thought I would touch on is the topic of overinflation. I know that a lot of people, when they buy a high-end match ball, they spend a lot of money on a new ball. They're kind of worried about damaging the ball by way of putting too much air in it. And if I'm being completely honest with you guys, it's something that's fairly difficult to do with a hand pump, especially a small one that I was using in this video. Because you're only pumping such a small amount of air in the ball per pump, it's something that is, like I said, very, very difficult to do. You would have to really pump the ball for quite a long time in order to overinflate it. And even then, you're unlikely to cause damage. Again, if you feel like the ball is kind of getting to the point where it is full of air, if you will, pump it a couple times, take the pump out, feel it, pump it a couple more times if you feel like it needs more. But again, just use your judgment, but overinflation isn't necessarily something that you have to worry about, especially with a small hand pump. So just to summarize again, you want the ball to have a pingy sensation overall. It should never have a soft feel. It should feel like something that you would use in a game. And that's something that I think is very important because you want to practice with the ball that is somewhat regulation air pressure or as close to, uh, to that as possible because practicing with a ball that is underinflated is kind of a waste in time. Obviously, you're not gonna play with an underinflated ball in the game. At least, at least the ref shouldn't allow for that to happen. And if you do feel like the ball you're playing with in the game is underinflated, let the ref know and he will likely fix that situation for you. Another recommendation is keeping that hand pump in your bag with you at all times. Just because you put air in the ball right now and it has proper air pressure, it doesn't mean that it's gonna be at the same air pressure variance in the next day or two. Airs, air will leak out of the balls, that's completely normal, especially higher end ones. They tend to leak air more quickly than a cheaper ball will just due to the materials that are used for the bladder internally. So again, keep that um, pump on you at all times. Before you practice, make sure you have proper air. And that really is the best situation for practicing in general and having proper air pressure in your ball. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any questions regarding this topic, leave it down below in the comment section and I will do my best to answer all of your questions. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.